Hey, what's the deal, y'all? Thanks for joining me this afternoon. It's your boy, Big Star Raw Sports here. Uh, y'all know rawsports.tv is the website. Uh, the YouTube channel is Raw Sports Films to see all previous episodes of Legends Week. Um, today's uh, double header, you know, double feature um, of the uh, season six of uh, Legends Week. Um, you know, I guess, you know, a season finale. Uh, got, a, got a classic, man. You know, anybody who knows uh, Pennsylvania High School, uh, you know, basketball, you know, definitely knows and remembers the name Charles Smith uh, from the mid, uh, you know, early to mid 90s. Um, played at Chichester High School, was a dominant force, man. I mean, high flyer, amazing player, man. I actually have a little bit of history with Charles and, you know, we'll talk about that. My, my god brother, Derek Perry, uh, played with him at Ryder as well. And um, Charles will come back, you know, to Norristown and play in our summer league. So I remember seeing him there, you know, firsthand. Um, but besides that, man, he went on to have, a, you know, an amazing career at Ryder and uh, professionally overseas, um, just like uh, my man um, Kyle Hines that I interviewed yesterday, um, Charles Smith, man, he's, you know, uh, you know, all he's, all, all he's done overseas is, is win, man. So, you know, I guess the, one of the themes, you know, is, you know, through Legends Week that I'm finding out, man, um, you know, for all you ballers out there, all you basketball players who are chasing that dream, you know, um, don't, don't limit yourself with only thinking about, you know, the NBA, man. I mean, these guys that I'm talking to, a lot of, a lot of them, man, are having major success overseas uh, professionally, man. Um, okay, we got my man Charles Smith on. It's about to go down. Charles Smith, C. Smith, the, the Chichester legend. Hey, t turn your phone. Um, there we go. There we go. Hey, can you hear me? Because I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Oh, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. What, what's good, man? It's, it's, I, I can see you clear, but the audio is going in and out. Like I can see your lips move, but I can't hear you like like consistently. Sometimes, hold on. Yeah, I can hear you now. It may have been the earbuds. Yeah, sometimes they connect, sometimes they don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a little bit of a delay. We perfect now, man. I can hear you loud and clear, man. Can you hear me clear? Yeah. All right. So we're here with the Chichester Rider legend, man. You know, you we 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 got it. We definitely have a connection, man. My bro, uh, my god brother DP, Derek Perry, you know, Nar Sound Legend. You know, yeah. we connected through him. Yeah, for real, man. So um you know, I, 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 I was just uh, giving the people a little bit of an intro real quick, if you don't mind. I'd just like to le read a little bit of your resume, pay homage to you real quick. Is that all right? Yeah, that's cool. So, so I was doing some research, man. Um, I, I, I interviewed my bro, um, Kyle Hines, um, yesterday, and I told him, you know, he, he, he's currently you know, currently still playing overseas. And I was yeah. reading his resume, man, and his, his, his resume was like pages long. And, and, and it, was, it was almost like deja vu when I when I looked at your, your Wikipedia page, man. I saw all these amazing accomplishments overseas, man. And it just made me so proud, man. So um, so uh, it said that you were considered one of the greatest BBL, British Basketball League players ever. That's one of the things that was really impressive. Um, in high school, uh, I believe it was your se senior year, if I'm not mistaken, averaged uh, 25 points, 11 rebounds, four blocks, and you were Del Valle Player of the Year. Yeah. Uh, BBL MVP 2015, three-time BBL Team of the Year, six-time BBL Champion, three-time BBL Trophy MVP, BBL Playoff Final MVP. Uh, your number 10 jersey was retired uh, in, with the New Newcastle Eagles. Um, and in 94, um, you were Rookie of the Year in, in the conference, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Ryder, yeah. Got you, got you, got you, man. So... I'm excited to have you joining me here today for Legends Week, man. Um, you know, two two things, you know, two of the main reasons why I do this, man, Charles, is just to pay homage to individuals like yourself, man. Like, I was there. I was a witness. I saw you playing. And, um, you know, you left uh, such a great imp uh, impression on Pennsylvania high school basketball, man. So I just want to, you know, um, pay homage to your career, um, do all I can to help to solidify your legacy so no, so, so no one ever forgets about Charles Smith and the things that you've uh, contributed, you know, to our culture, man. And also for this younger generation, I want to make sure I educate them to let them know who Charles Smith is, you know what I'm saying, as one of the individuals who's, uh, you know, laid some of the foundation and, um, you know, 
um, and carried it well when it was your turn, man, you know, in high school and college and all that, man. So Legends Week, man, I appreciate you joining me, man. Oh, man, I appreciate you having me, man. Just such an honor just to be considered with, with some of the legends that you have interviewed already. So I'm very appreciative of it. No doubt, man. We're going to get right into it, man. I appreciate your time. Um, um, a segment I call 10 Random Questions. I'm going to just throw 10 random things at you just to kind of get us warmed up, and then we'll get into your story. And once it's story time, um, I'm going to just I'm gonna just give you the freedom just to kind of tell your story. I have some questions prepared, but um, I, I will prefer to just kind of give you the freedom just to kind of talk and just, you know, freely tell your story at, at, you know, any way you want to from the beginning. And then um, at, at the end, you know, if we have a nice audience, um, I'll let, you know, let you uh, uh, have a little Q&A. Let the people, you know, ask you some questions uh, directly and we'll, you know, kind of finish up there. All right. All right. That's cool. All right. So um, what's, what, what, when did you go overseas? You finished Ryder in? 97. 97. Well, and yeah. Yeah. And, and then my you, first what, year going overseas was 97. Okay. Got you. So what do you think, thinking back from then, uh, that 97 year, what do you think your biggest adjustment was? And, and how old were you? How old were you then? 21. Wow, you was a young boy. <laughs> so, so you go all the way across the map. What was your biggest adjustment as a 21 year old? You know, going out of the country by yourself as a professional. Uh, I guess trying to learn to be a professional. Really, I mean, you out there by yourself in a in a foreign country. Um, my first job was down in Venezuela, so I mm -hmm. really didn't speak the language. So, mm -hmm. you're trying to adjust the language barrier and being by yourself, and it's it's tough at first, but. I mean, you put in the work, and there's a lot more people speak English than you than you um, believe. Okay, okay. Because when you first get there, I think it's kind of a, oh, who are you? I mean, we're really not going to speak to you. But once they get to know you and you start playing and performing on the court, it seems like everybody in the whole country speak English then. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody want to know your name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Um. Uh, most points scored in the game at any level, high school, AAU, college, professional, anything? Um, probably professional. I put up 50 um, professionally, so. Mm -hmm. and when, when and where was that? What, what team was that or what country? Um, that was in England. I in England? Yeah. Got you, got you, got you. Got you. Um, do you know any other languages, like either fluently or, or enough to kind of get you by? I mean, I've learned – a little bit of Spanish is enough to get me by. I can probably understand it better than I can speak it. Got you, got you, got you. Okay, um, give, give me something. Give me something in Spanish right now. Just, just give me a. See, see, there you go. You try to put me on the spot. I know uno, dos, tres. You know I can dig it. You know what I mean? So, so when they talk dollars and. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah, enough to count that money. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's right. Um, who's, a, who's a local player? Um, that, that inspired you kind of growing up, you know, in the Chichester area, Chester area, Philadelphia area, PA in general, who were some guys who, who you looked up to, you know, before it was your time, you know, as you was coming along? As I was coming along, probably um, one of them was Clarence Armstrong. He went to Chai. Mm -hmm. and he was like probably Mr. Chai before I got there. I've read about him, man. I've read yeah. about Clarence Armstrong and I got to try to hunt him down. I got to try to find him. I read, when I was doing some history, I, when I was yeah. looking online, like when I Google like Chai Chester basketball, his name definitely came up. So I definitely got to try to find him as well. Yeah, he's right there in Delaware. He lives right around the corner from my parents now. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, at the end of this, man, some, sometime if you could possibly help me to try to try, try to track him down, that would be a yeah. blessing. But he he was really um one that, that paved the way for me, really. Like he showed me the ropes and stuff. But um, it was just a shame that I never got to play with him like in high school. I played with him outside of school and stuff in summer leagues and here and there. But, I mean, he was, he was the man in the area. And to look up to him and see what he accomplished at the high school level was, was amazing. And then he did well in college, too. But um, teammates, one of my favorite teammates, actually didn't even go on to play basketball. It was John Mobley. Okay. <laughs> he went on to play football, so he played in the NFL. Got you. And my sophomore year, he was a senior. Okay. So yeah, he he really paved the way and he showed me, I guess that I could really do something if I put my mind to it. So mm -hmm. and, and I really looked up to him even now to this day. I still <laughs> got gotcha. you. But players I played against, I mean, in the high school level, I played against some some real tough talent. Um, all those Chester Chester teams with Zane Shaw and and those guys, and then you had like Turk Mott. Over at Glen Mills, um, yes, yes, that was the that so. was the era right there, for real. 
I mean, many people was like, oh, you put up some big numbers. I was like, yeah, but I had a bunch of killers around me that, that just was, if I'd have came a year or two later, <laughs> I mean, maybe I could have went straight to the league or something. No doubt. <laughs> I have, but I had, what, Rasheed Wallace was right up there in Philly. He was my year. All those guys, so. <laughs> and you graduated, what, 93? I graduated in 93. Oh man, that was yeah, that was that was she Wallace. I mean, that was a classic era right there. That's what I'm saying. Hey man, it was everywhere, all around the state, man. It was everywhere, man. Yep, <laughs> for sure. Um, what's your favorite? Um, you know, you've traveled the country. What's your favorite dish? Um, from from any country, from, whether it's in England, you know, uh, you know, Venezuela. Your favorite food? Uh, uh, if you if you had to to go with one, steak. Steak. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Wine. I, got, I actually got one. I just took one out the fridge just now before I came upstairs. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. And just let the people know, where, where are you reporting live from? Where, 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 where are you living at right now? Um, Newcastle in England. In England. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And how long have you lived in, lived in England? On and off for about 20 years now. Oh, wow. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that's like the primary country that you've kind of been playing in, like in the England area? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. I've been, gotcha. I've been, I've been settled over here since 08. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, I still, I still went back to the states and stuff over the summers and things of that to see family and friends. Uh -huh. But resident, I've been over here. I know that's right. That's cool, man. That's pretty <laughs> awesome, man. Um, what other sports did you play growing up besides basketball? Well, I played football. Mm -hmm. I played football in high school growing up. Okay. And then I, um, I kind of took a big hit going across the middle, and that was the end of my football career. <laughs> <laughs> that's a common theme. It's a lot of people who kind of say the same thing. <laughs> I mean, I got up and walked away from it, but. My body said, nah, this ain't for you. Plus, like, I was getting recruited by, like, different colleges and stuff, and they was like, well, if you want to play, play basketball, you might want to get that football up. I, know, so, right. I mean, I wasn't the greatest, but I used my left ability to um, kind of I, I post it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. A, like a tight end. So, I mean, come off the middle and, and, and just throw <laughs> it up there, and I'm going to go get it. <laughs> no doubt. That's what's up. Um, what's one of your favorite uh, sports movies of all time? Sports movies. I, I like Love and Basketball, actually. Because mm -hmm. it shows the dedication on both sides. I mean, trying to adjust to not only caring for your basketball, but for the, the love in your life, too. Mm -hmm. And for most people, the love is, is the basketball. And you kind of got to balance that, really, mm -hmm. especially if you're going to have a relationship with somebody. Gotcha. So gotcha. That makes that that makes a lot of sense, especially with guys with ball is life and the ball is everything. Yeah. I'm sure for some individuals it's possibly been difficult along the way to maintain a, a relationship where, yeah. where where you know basketball, I mean you, you you're playing overseas, you're traveling all across the country, your your you, you love may be stateside or wherever, and it's like it's it's hard to maintain both, I'm sure. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Um uh this this one this one, think about this one. Um uh, over, 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 it's been it's been awesome interviewing you guys who've played overseas because I've been hearing some pretty pretty like unbelievable overseas stories like like when I first heard like like my guy brother Marcus Green was telling me how like um they were they were um he was telling me some crazy stuff uh, Marcus Green had told me that like Rashid Brookenborough told me like uh. One time they, they were setting fires in the stands in this one country he was playing in. And I was like amazed. I'm like, what do you mean setting fire? He's like, no, like like every game, it would be fires set in the stands and, and, and fans fighting. And uh, Kyle Hines yesterday, who plays um, in, in, in Italy, he yeah. said, I'm not sure if it was in Italy or somewhere else, um, Germany or something. He said um, they were the, the, the opposing fans would be shooting flares at each other from from either side and he said one day during the warm up he was warming up and he got hit with a flare in the back yeah. of his head and it like burnt his clothes and the coaches were just like 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 it, that, that was just normal like it was no big deal they just you know continued the game so so I, I say all that to say what's one of your wildest like um overseas memories whether it's a fan related thing or just something wild man that we don't experience here over over in the states <laughs> i mean probably got a got a couple of them but <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, just break them down, man, because I love these stories, man. They're getting better and better, man. Nah, in Venezuela, down that one was wild down there. Cause, I mean, those fans, you, they they set fires in the stands. But then you got, I mean, a lot of people got girls and stuff now, but back then I didn't. And to see what they actually wore the games, they got there with just the thongs on and 
<laughs> just a thing. I mean, your attention is supposed to be on the basketball, but <laughs> to be honest with you, the way they act on the sidelines and in the stands, there's no way you can concentrate on that basketball. <laughs> but it's not only that. The travel, when I first started, I mean, it's not as good as it is now. Mm -hmm. But we used to take a minivan, like, but not just, not like a 15 passenger, like someone's personal van uh -huh. with 12 people in there all stacked on for like say three or four hours wow that's crazy and like some of the roles you seen the um dangerous highway shows yes like yes yes like we documentaries probably, like world's dangerous most dangerous roads you know, cliffs and everything we all know those roads and wow <laughs> yo that's insane dog but then um in greece they had to the, like the barrier they had the barriers over the um the benches uh-huh because those fans would throw batteries and coins and everything. You could hear them like hitting off it as you sit on the bench. Like you guys, fans or opposing fans? Like whoever they just, <laughs> they just angry people for some reason. Like, and I said to my man yesterday, I'm like, what's the point in coming to the game if they're gonna come and just like just buck, just go buck wild yeah, and not they just, just enjoy the game? They just got the the barriers over the benches. And they were like, yo, when you on the bench, make sure you stay down and stay on the <laughs> barrier. Because the fans are just out there like, pow, pow, like just throwing up at you. And that's just tradition, huh? Yeah. And everybody else just sat there like it's normal. You like <laughs> jumping like every time, like you hear. <laughs> you looking like, yo, you hear that? They're like, yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Like, not the fool, man. Ain't nothing going to happen. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Yo, that's unbelievable. Um, lastly, man, um, I know you were a high flyer, man. You know, just, you know, slam dunking was one of your trademarks, man. Um, what's one of your, your your most memorable dunk memories, whether it's like, you know, high school, AAU, college, just any any slam dunk that you still remember? Hey, well, I don't know if he's going to be on here watching, but he might get mad. I don't know if you know Spencer Dunkley. Um, I, I think so, maybe through social media. Yeah, he he's from England, but he went to UD. He okay. Where? And he, um, he got drafted to the league and stuff. Okay. And I, was, I was a junior in high school, and I went down for my visit to UD. And he was, like, the big man on campus because NBA scouts and everything. But, and I came down and leaned on him one time, tough one. And that's my, every time I see him, I mention that, too. <laughs> that's, that's funny, it. man. One That's cool, man. Hey, well, it's, um, it's time to get into it, man. If you can, man, just take us back to where where and when uh, the Charles Smith story begins, man. And, um, you know, straight straight from the, from the beginning of your story, um, beginning of your journey, man. Just uh, just start us off from there. Well, I'm from uh, Bridgeville, Delaware. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Delaware. Delaware. Delaware Dire City. Mm -hmm. so that's where I'm originally from. And, I mean, we had guys down there that, I mean, it, it, it was rough, but... We made it out. Not, not that we made it out, because we, I guess we wasn't brought up to be hanging out there on the streets and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we was watched over. and But we had guys down there that, that balled out. And like Eric Dredden, we used to play against him, me and my cousin. Like he would play us like two-on-ones. And then mm -hmm. I got to a certain age, and he was like, man, I can't do nothing with you no more. So... Mm -hmm. But just playing out there on the on the concrete, like every day down there, that's where I think I got my toughness from. Was growing up down there, gotcha. And playing against those guys down there, because when I was growing up, it wasn't like, oh, you playing on the under tens team or the under twelves team. You ten, you still playing with the grown men. And exactly, exactly. So, if you want to get on the court, you know what I mean. You got to yeah. figure it out. <laughs> Once you out there, you better be able to do something, or you ain't gonna exactly. get out there no more. Exactly. So I, I started down there, and then I moved up to um, Chichester. What, what what brought you guys to uh to Chi to the Chichester area? Well, actually, my parents like lived up there before I moved up. Like I I lived with my grandparents. Okay. So I was in the uh, fifth grade. Okay. And then I moved up of the PA with them. So that's what I kind of just said like I was ready to move in with y'all. <laughs> I was ready mm -hmm. to go. Yeah. So that was the decision that we made, and I moved up and. I went to Chai, and in junior high, like I was, I guess I was only about what five nine or so, and then going from ninth grade to tenth grade, I kind of had like a big spurt. <laughs> so I came back that that next year to start my senior, my 
senior high in high school, I, was, I came back at like six four. Wait, what? You go from five nine? <laughs> I was five nine, grade, five ten. To in like six four in ninth grade. No, ninth grade I was only like five ten, five nine, five ten, ten in ninth grade. Okay. But back back then, ninth grade was still at junior high. Oh, got, got you, got you, got you, got you. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Okay. And then when I went up to the high school, which was 10th grade, that's when I made the jump to, I came in about 6'4 after that. <laughs> so so from junior high, ninth grade, to, to, to the next year in 10th grade, um, and, and that's when you could play varsity and all that kind of stuff. When yeah. you were ready, got you. So you you, 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 you come back at 6'4". That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so I, came, I came right in. That's why I, I, me and Clarence, the guy I was telling you about before, I always talk about because when he was coming through, they let him leave the junior high and play in high school. Okay. But then when I was in ninth grade, they wouldn't let me. They wasn't. They wasn't having it. Nah. But a couple gotcha. years earlier, a couple years earlier, they let it happen. Gotcha. gotcha. So that's gotcha. why I said that's. I was like, that's the only reason you score more points than me. You had an extra year. No and doubt. It, no doubt. And it, and it wasn't even that many points. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Hey, real quick, I forgot to mention, man. Sorry to cut you off. Whenever, um, whenever it's a legend watching, or you know, whenever I see the comments, or somebody, uh, somebody joins another legend, man, definitely gotta, you know, uh, shout them out. Um, shout out to my man Rap Curry. If you see that Penwood Athletics, that's Rap Curry yeah. right there. Shout out to Rap, man. Another legend, okay. man, for sure. Yep. Well, go ahead. So you say, so you 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 have this growth spurt, and you come back tenth grade. You're six four. Continue from there. Yeah. So I come back, and that's when I'm. Like, I'm playing on the varsity now. I made the varsity team. That's when John Mobley and them was probably the dominant guys back then. Even though he went on to play professional football, he still played basketball, too, and he was a good player. Mm -hmm. And I had a couple um, other guys on there that was good, too. But they um, they let me do me, if you know what I'm saying. They didn't say, oh, you the young boy on the block, so we're not going to let you play. They, gonna let you, they still let me do what I could do and and kind of – pushed me to the, to the limelight at Chai, really. So, mm -hmm. and then the next two years, my junior and senior year, it was just, it was really me. No doubt. I had, I had some good guys on the team that played like their roles on the team. And you can't doubt them for what they did. They did an excellent job. But, I mean, from the numbers I put up in high school, like any other, any other year or, if I was in a different area putting up those numbers, it would have been a different story. But I think because I was at Chai, we wasn't known for basketball. Mm -hmm. I mean, even like in the area, we I went back to the high school, was it two years ago? Mm -hmm. They ain't done nothing since my banner was up there. Oh, yeah? Wow. <laughs> just like just back down or just back to being quiet. Yeah. So, I mean, they got some good guys coming through now, but still, I mean – to go from Clarence Armstrong and all of them and John Mobin, then after my year, it just kind of went quiet. Mm -hmm. But um, I think I signed to go to Ryder at, at, after my junior year. So going mm -hmm. into my senior year, I was kind of free, like to okay. just play. I didn't have to worry about um, going out to impress no recruiters or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And hey, 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 real quick, sorry to cut you off. Just hold that thought. Was there ever any interest or um, a pool? You know, it's like nowadays, you know, a kid from like it's it's tons of players from Chester, um, but they're, they're they're going to Roman Catholic, they're going to all these different schools. Was there ever any pull for you to like shoot shoot down to Philly to go to one of the Catholic schools or any of the schools down there and transfer? Like when you were like you know tenth or your junior year, or anything like that, or no? Because I'm sure uh, your name was circulating, or no, you was just straight up Chai Chester, you know, rocking out. Yeah, I, I was happy where I was. Okay, I mean, doing my thing. I mean. I spoke to a couple guys like that that I knew like throughout the summers and stuff to try to get me say oh I think it was um Delaware is a team in Delaware that wanted me to come down there okay. Car Car Caravel Academy because gotcha. they were big big when I was coming through yeah and I played played with a couple guys that went there and they wanted me mm -hmm. to come down there yeah that, that, that's 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 kind of what I'm talking about because a lot of yeah. times you play with these guys and there may be a pool yo come down here with us like these academies or these kind of prep schools that yeah. kind of thing yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I, I was just curious, you know what I'm saying? But some guys, you know, but that we also come from the era where, you know, your home school, your neighborhood school, public schools, like that was, you played you played where you lived and you, you had pride in that. Oh, so, oh yeah. Definitely a different era, yeah. I definitely had pride in, in Chai, you know what I mean? I was, I was willing to do anything to help help them win, and, and we did a good job back then. I mean, even though the Chesters still had good teams, the Mills still had good teams, Shoot, we came along, we competed and beat them, so – it wasn't like we was just 
little kids on the block. We, no we was there. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> Yeah, so you, so you, I think you were talking about your senior year. So you mentioned something about Ryder. I'm not sure exactly what your last. Yeah, name. I signed with Ryder after my junior year. Uh huh. So like I was kind of free my senior year just to go out there and do what I needed to do. But I mean, the crazy thing is I got recruited by a lot of bigger schools. Like during my senior year, I started getting letters. I'm like, well, these letters wasn't there before, so I'm gonna stick. And people thought I was crazy. They're like, oh, why are you still going to the small school? I'm like, they they've been here since the beginning. I mean, they stuck with me, and I'm willing to go there and help them out. Got you, got you. It makes sense. So, so like, I still – I got recruited by some of the um, – couple schools. Um, Providence came on late, like Duquesne. Um, DePaul came in late. Cal. But I was like, really, I didn't want to go, I guess, too far. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wanted to kind of still stay in the area but move a little bit away. Got you. And I mean, that helped me. I mean, cause I still had, I had two younger brothers coming up. I wanted to make sure they, they got to see me play and uh -huh. Emily got to see me play and they got to come to just about every single game. Gotcha, gotcha. So I then, know that's for you. Yeah. So then um, I go to Ryder. So 93, 94 is my freshman year. I go to Ryder and I'm, I mean, I, I wasn't even supposed to start or be considered like for a starting role, I had two guys that was um, supposed to play. Hey, hey, real quick, my fault. Your guy Clarence Armstrong is in the building, man. Clarence in there? Yeah, uh, I, Justin Armstrong, five forty-seven. In my guy Charlie, legend Clarence Armstrong here. Thanks for the shout out. Yeah, that's his brother. Oh, his brother. Yeah. Got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. <laughs> that's yeah, what's up. Just, that's what's up. That's Go his ahead, brother. Yeah, he came up with my brothers, Justin, dude. Got you, got yeah. you, got you. Now, uh, but so I went to Ryder freshman year. I got um, I think player of the week almost every week my freshman year. Gotcha. You know what I mean, so and then got uh, freshman of the year. And I made um, was it the U.S. Uh, Olympic Festival I went to after my freshman year. Mm -hmm. That's when I, I guess I kind of started getting into my mind that I probably could, I guess, make a career out of it. Mm -hmm. I started getting, I guess, linked with some of the big names in basketball. Uh -huh. So, like, on my team, you had the Alvin Williams and the um, Ray Allens, like, all those type guys. Wow. I played, I played with um, Kareem Reed and them. I mean, so I started playing with bigger name people and coming from, like, the little area where I come from, like, well, shoot, maybe, maybe this is something I can do if I actually, like, lock in. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> do what I need to do, so... Next couple of years at Ryder, I mean, it was good. We made it to the um, NCAA tournament my freshman year. Oh, wow. That's dope. So that was the first time we went up against Ray Allen and um, Danielle Marshall, Donnie Marshall. Yo, I thought that was crazy. They had a crew, man. I'm like, like we did all this hard work. This is what we get in the first round? <laughs> to, come, to go up against these guys? <laughs> Just because they, I think they lost in their conference tournament, so they dropped down to um, – like a two or three. I'm like, man, y'all needed to win, so we had to play y'all. Exactly. Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> nah, but it was um, it was a good one. Good game in the first half. I think we was tied up at halftime, but then being a smaller school, we, we didn't have that size and stuff to yeah. deal with their muscle and stuff. Uh -huh. And then we, um, the next couple years, like I said, was good years. We played in um, against Kentucky and St. John's in the Garden. Those were some good ones. I mean, um, Kentucky, their national um, championship team, Rick Pitino and them was there. and Okay. They had all of them. Tony Delt and them. M Walter McCarty. Walter McCarty, all of them. Wow. Oh, that was a team, right? I remember them, um, like, those those McDonald's All-American, you know, games with all them guys in it, man. They they, they, they were good, man. They were real yeah, they good. Got, they got 10 All-Americans on their team. Exactly. <laughs> For sure. Exactly. That wasn't fair, man. That was crazy. Hey. Hey, I had, like I said, coming from Bridgeville, I had that in me, so that I ain't backing down from nobody. I know that's right, for sure. So I, for still, sure. I still went out there and, and did my thing, and mm -hmm. it's still out there. You can go check it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, so, and then my, um, the next year, what did we get? Um, I made the, the NIT game. We played mm -hmm. Simple. 
that was like, I guess the first big game in, in Philly for us. Cause I had never played like in Philly in college. So to get the temple game in, uh, in the NIT tournament was, was a big one. Mm -hmm. so I, had, I had all my family come all Bridgeville, basically almost all Bridgeville was there. Mm -hmm. I was there. It's like, yo, we hit and we should have won. We didn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I scored, I scored 20, um, two straight points to start the game. 22 straight in the seat. Wow, that's crazy. 30. So we, we had 24. I think we had 26 at halftime. I had 24. Yo, that's insane, dog. <laughs> that's insane, man. Yeah. That's crazy. So people always, like, people over here in England don't, I guess they, they think I just started getting buckets later on in my career. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. like, yo, I got buckets for a long time. That, that, that was nothing new. That was definitely <laughs> nothing new. <laughs> and on national, a national televised game to to do that, that was that was big. That's when, I mean, they they had um like Lenore Stewart and all of them was was there, and they had some 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 tough teams. Mm -hmm. But um, during those summers though, in college stuff, I still went and played like summer league in Philly and you know? okay the runs in the Sunny Hill League and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, down in McGonagall Hall. Yeah, so everybody played in those, really. And to go up against some of the guys I went up against, like Eddie Jones and all them, like to be able to, to say I competed and, and did well against some of the, these great guys that's been out there is, is just something different. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then I lead Ryder in my first professional gig was down in Venezuela, like we talked about before. Uh-huh. And that was, that was just a different experience. Yeah, like said, yeah, yeah. I really couldn't um speak the language. I mean, my first time really leaving the country mm -hmm. like by my by myself. Uh-huh. Gotcha. I left the country before on like different like NIT teams and national teams like that and stuff. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> But yeah, so we. Hey, 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 real quick, did you um like after after Ryder, um did you like have an agent? Like, was there any plans to to you know try to like get into the NBA or like when did overseas? Like, did you always have your mind set on overseas or like how did that kind of play out? No, I mean, I guess coming out, I always wanted, I guess, a shot at the NBA. But I mean, I had an agent, and um, I actually signed with the agent that he was Vince Carter's agent at the time. Gotcha. And um, they came down and, and watched us work out one time up in Philly, like mm -hmm. the Raptors did. So, but that was the, um, the lockout year. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. I understand. So, I mean, I never know what could have happened, like, if it didn't have the lockout, but. Yeah, it was what it was. It was what it was. Like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't have no regrets. Gotcha. I had a great career and stuff, but, and that's when the agent stuff started looking at, in Europe, just like everyone else's agent did, because exactly. wasn't basketball in America, so mm -hmm. everybody trying to get a gig out. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I did play in um, in the CBA, which is now in the G League. Uh huh. So I played in that for um, I think two months. I played in there. I mean, it was alright, was nice little gig, but yeah, it's not. I mean, it's totally different now. Like the G League is just so much bigger and stuff now. Uh huh. So you so, said, uh, so Venezuela, then? And then uh, I went over to Taiwan. So Taiwan was, I don't know if you remember um, Johnny Rose. He went to Maryland. I remember the name. I definitely remember the and name. I played with him over there. Another guy over there, Hodge. Like, it was, some, it was some good guys over there I played with over in Taiwan. That was, that was good over there. Yeah. I mean, people said, oh, you going over there? I'm like, it was decent. Like, yeah, I yeah. No complaints over there. Uh-huh. So it was good. And then I'm... Um, I actually didn't play the following year. Like, so I, I set out like an entire year after those two. Okay. I mean, I had um, like a car accident. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so I was out for a year after that. And I was like, you, like what type, what type of injuries, if you don't mind me, like, was, was it like just like, like health kind of like injuries from the accident kind of put you out, like recovering and stuff for a while or? Yeah, I recovered. It took me a while to recover. I mean, I still got like scars and stuff on my face and stuff like that. And okay. like, my eye was like messed up and stuff. But mm -hmm. I mean, I just, it was just a year out. I mm -hmm. mean, it was nothing. Nothing came up that I, I guess, I actually wanted to take and wanted to go. 
and I was willing like to wait. I mm -hmm. knew I knew my worth, and I guess I ain't want to say, "Oh, I'm gonna take this just to take it." Yeah. So, so transitioning back into the game after you know after you year off was smooth. Like your agent was like, "Look, I still got some things lined up for you. And you just jump right back into it." Oh yeah. So I went back the following year. I went to um, Austria. Okay. So I went over to Austria, and I it was decent. I mean, it was the um, it was the second division over there, so I didn't get right back into the top, but. I put up big numbers over there, and, I mean, it helped me, I guess, move on to, to what I wanted to do next because the, the way I came to England was, I don't know if you um, remember Ralph Blaylock. That, that name sounds familiar as well. Yeah, from Delaware. He's the one who actually brought me to England. Okay. <laughs> so without, without him, I probably would have never came to England because mm -hmm. we played on the same summer league team over there and I'm um, just outside of Chester. Gotcha. In the summer league. So with um we played against the guys like Jameer Nelson, all of them, they all played over there. So we played over there and he brought me he brought me to England. And it's kinda I guess history from there. Mm -hmm. Like once I got to England it was kinda I mean it wasn't smooth sailing. Uh huh. Still had to I guess prove myself. I had a, a tough injury my first year over here or my ankle. Mm-hmm. So I, I missed a little bit of time, and then the team didn't bring me back right away. So that's when I went. I think I played in Portugal after that. Okay. And then I came back to England <laughs> after that, still with, with Newcastle. So, but Portugal, once again, was the second division over there, but they still took care of me, looked after me, and I helped, I guess, make that franchise that I did play for more prominent again. Mm -hmm. Cause they they were kind of down the season before, but when I left, I mean they've done well since. Got you, got you. And and um, I, at at the top of the hour, I had read off you know some of your accomplishments, man. I mean, you know, you did a lot of winning, uh, received tons of MVPs, um, yeah. in your stretch in England, man. Like you know, I'm curious, like you know, guys bounce all around, but you you were you were like in England for for a good a good poor you know a good portion of your time, correct? Yeah, I spent majority of my career in England. Yeah, so how how is that? Like, how is that possible? I mean, not not how is it possible, but but like that, like from other guys that I've spoken to, it's pretty much like every year or every you know every other year they're kind of somewhere else. But for you to consistently be in one place, like kind of explain explain that process, like explain you know how you were able to make that work. Well, first, I uh, I guess I became my own agent. Okay. <laughs> so I started negotiating my own deals and and. I just I did my thing while I was here in the team. We negotiated every year, but I always told them this is where I wanted to be. They always wanted me back. Me and mm -hmm. um, the coach at the time, we had a, a great relationship. Mm -hmm. So, and the owner also like so. I, I mean, they good friends now. Mm -hmm. But like I said, and we was winning. Mm -hmm. So as long as we was winning, <laughs> keep coming they, back. They didn't want to make no changes. No doubt. No I mean, doubt. So and, that, and that was the Newcastle team? Yeah, Newcastle Eagles. So we might change one or two guys every year, but we was bringing back the core of our team. Gotcha. Because we was winning championships every year, so. <laughs> yeah. That's dope. And how, how how many years did you play for Newcastle? Like, how many championships and, like, you know, do you kind of remember, uh, you know, participating in? Uh, I think my time here, I think I won 22. Wow. 22, um, like, Pieces of silverware, what they call over here. Silverware, no doubt, no yeah. doubt. So I went, I think it's 22. Yeah, well, I was great. here. I was here, what, I think 13, 13 seasons? That's a that's a long stretch, man. That's a that's a great career, man. Yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah. I mean, and the best bit about it was, I guess, when I won MVP and I was 39 years old. Wow, MVP at 39. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's dope, man. So so what were you doing at 39 to win the MVP? Like, you know, had your game changed? Has it had, had it evolved? Were you yeah. the same Charles Smith that you were when you were 21 versus, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, Vince Carter at 21 versus Vince Carter, 
his last couple of years, or, or you know, Mike, you know, uh, Michael Jordan, or you know, M Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, as soon as they came in the league, opposed to you know later on, you know, they 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 develop different a different skill set, or you know, what I'm saying they're playing more back to the basket, you know, what I'm saying and different things. How 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 was the evolution of your game, and how are you still able to get that that MVP at 39, man? Well, I guess most of the guys that uh, I guess be on here and remember me was being, I guess, like a high flyer, really. And that's what I remember, dunking on people and just, you know what I mean, vertical crazy and just going yeah. nuts. Yeah, that's what I remember. See, that's how people remember. But, I mean, things change and the game evolves and, and injuries bring you down below the rim. <laughs> <laughs> and some guys don't know how to adjust when they can't yeah. do what they've been doing for so long. But, I mean, I worked on it. I put the hours in in the gym. And, I mean, I became a great shooter. Okay. So, so from the mid range all the way out to the three, like I was a great shooter, but I expanded my post game. Okay. I mean, so, and just, I was just willing to do whatever it took just to, to keep going and getting better every year. Uh huh. I mean, the way I took care of my body later on in my career, I think if I, if I knew how to do that earlier on in my career, I, I might have probably wouldn't have stayed in Newcastle, to be honest with you. Gotcha. So, I mean, I can say, yeah, I did good by having a great career. I mean, Newcastle was happy to have me here. I was happy to be here. But I think if I'd have learned to take care of my body, I probably would have played at a higher level or a bigger country. Gotcha. So what, what, what are some of those keys to to taking care of your body? Because I'm sure, you know, it's going to be some young players, some high school players, college players watching this right now. And if they can learn from those things, that you found out later on, you know, I think it'll be really valuable. What are some things that you started to do that you wish you would have done with your body, you know, years prior? I mean, later on in my career, I kind of cut out sugar. Okay. So I cut out sugar and I started doing um, like a lot of yoga and stretching and stuff. Mm -hmm. And just, uh, I, I ate a lot better. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I wasn't just going out and saying, oh, I'm going to get these cookies right here. <laughs> I can jump on these cookies or these chips right here. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to start looking after it. I started, I guess, lifting different because I guess I started lifting for, I guess, not to actually, like, get bigger or nothing like that, just to get, I guess, elongated muscles so I could stretch more and be more flexible. Gotcha. That. But I worked on different aspects of my game every season, so I made sure I came back with something new every year. Got gotcha. you. I mean, I ain't just settled like, oh, okay, I can shoot now, so I'm good. Uh huh. Uh, next, year, next year, okay, next year I can shoot the three now. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> next year, next year, y'all can't stop me in the post now because I worked on that all summer. No doubt. And would it be like working on it um, here in the states, or you know, back still in England, just training and working hard? Yeah, I stayed over here. So, 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 what, what was it like, like there? Like, like, did you have a trainer? Or did you have a skills and drills guy? Were you just working on your own game? Was it the team still working together, or you know, how are you? Just you no, know, help me envision what your summers look like. Oh, my summers were, was me going and booking a gym myself. Okay. So over here is, I guess it's different from America. Like you might be in there playing basketball, and they come kick you off the court for badminton or something. Wow. I mean, because basketball is not. I you're guess. not you're you're definitely not the priority. <laughs> nah. <laughs> gotcha. At all. So you gotta so, find space and, and, and just you know, that that's where you, that's where the dedication shows. Yeah. So if you're willing it, it's places you can go and book and, and get in. So I made sure I got in places and me and my my girl now, she was being there with me and we mm -hmm. worked out because she played too. Okay. So we we worked out and, and got it in like the late the last like two years of my career mm -hmm. that's what that's what helped me big got you got you got you i mean that's just awesome. having just having the will to go out there and and do it like i said if i was i guess wanting to or or knew the knowledge to do it before would have been better but uh -huh. at least i i got there eventually of course <laughs> so, of course i of got course. there i figured it out and now what I'm doing now is coaching and stuff now, and I'm able to pass that on to other people now. Oh, are you coaching now? What what level? Uh, what what kind of? How are you, what are you coaching now? I'm coaching a um, Division three team over here. Oh, no doubt, like a Division yeah. three college team. No, nah, it's a um, national league team. Oh, so. oh okay, a Division three uh, national team, like a professional yeah. national team. 
Yeah. Oh wow, wow. So so describe that, man. Oh, first, first before you describe that, um, how did your um professional how and when did your professional playing career come to a close? Like at what point did you know in your mind, like, you know what, I think it's time to kinda, you know, close this chapter of my life, you know, playing professionally. Like, you know, how how did you come to that conclusion? Uh I think I I always had it in my mind that to say that, oh, when I'm forty, that's it. Okay. That's what was in my mind. But I think it's because I didn't want to be out there and not being me. Yeah, looking bad and yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I wanted to finish like where people was like, Oh, that was him there. <laughs> exactly. I, not like, I saw you, him. I saw like him that. hooping. Yeah. <laughs> All their memories were of you hooping and doing your yeah. thing. Yeah. That's yeah. I, yeah. I want everybody to remember that. Because you don't want no you don't want the younger dope. generation to come along and be like, who? Oh hey, Charles Smith, he a bum. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then you had somebody who got school and nah, man, he was a guy. <laughs> like, man, you better go Google me or something, exactly. man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You got to know when to say when. I can dig it. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So, um, so, so now, so, 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 so what uh, allowed you? So, how, how soon after you finished playing did you get the opportunity to to get involved with coaching and kind of how that how that started? Yeah, when I retired, I. Did. I didn't touch a basketball. I didn't go to a basketball game, nothing for two years. Oh, you quit cold turkey. Cold turkey. <laughs> I was like, that's it. I'm going to take a break. Let the body <laughs> heal up. Let the yes. mind heal up. And then I, um, what got me, I guess, interested back in coaching really is I spent like a couple months in America. Okay. My brother my brother was um assistant coach with the Phoenix Suns. Oh, wow. For a year. And – I went out there with him and just seeing that atmosphere and being in those coaches' meetings. And so I was like, man, this is, this might be something I want to do right here. I got you. Yep. Coach and stuff. And then I um, I went to a couple of practices and helped out with the um, the Blue Colts down in Delaware, the, the okay. Sixers League team. Uh huh. And then I was like, when I came back to England, I spoke to a guy not too far from Newcastle over on Teesside which is probably about 30 minutes from where I'm at. And they used to have a team, like in the Division One, over here. Uh-huh. So you got the BBLs where, like, I played at. And then you had, like, Division One, Two, and Three. Okay. So they used to have a team in Division One. They was well-known, but then they just dropped out the league. They ran out of money and stuff like, like that. So it's pretty much, like, financially driven, how, how, how yeah. teams can survive or not. Yeah. So – I spoke to the owner over there and was like, you trying to put a team like back together and, and do something. And he was willing to, to put a team back in and trusted me to be the coach. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, just like that. Yep. Like so you pretty spoke. much had a franchise built around you or, or continued, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, you, and, you carried, and you carried the dream. You carried the vision. So, so I'm bringing it back. This, this would be my second year now. Well, I I I, I got some el first. I got some eligibility left, man. I'm 43, <laughs> but I'm a, I might be able to do something in the post, man. You might need hey, to get me over there, man. Come on through. <laughs> I, I'll come for a tryout, I, man. I still go out there every once in a while. No doubt. Because <laughs> technically, I'm down as player coach. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I said. You know, remember uh, back in the day, everybody remember Tree Rollins was a player yeah. coach. Yeah, player coach. You 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 you. you Doing the X's and O's, but then you throw it, you get in the game. I can dig it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I go out there and do it. So we just started um, practicing again um, a couple weeks ago. Okay. That's what's up. How, 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 how are practices, um, how are things, um, like how are the rules, how are practices run, you know, either similar or different than they are, than they may be ran in the States or NBA college here? I mean, you're going to get different practices on each level. Okay. <clears throat> High school to college to professionals are all gonna be they're gonna be structured but a little bit a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, my level is I guess guys that want to play but are happy playing at a certain level. I understand. And then you got some people that are come in like coming up like might be only seventeen or eighteen. Okay. They just want they want to get better, and this is a way for them to get better is to start there because. For some reason, a lot of the BBL teams don't play younger guys. Okay. So got you. They, so they come down to a lower division, play, and then hope to move up. Almost like a resume builder, just kind of you know getting themselves yeah. involved. Hey, curious. All right, so you can break this down for me. 
um, for the people who don't understand, I understand it a little bit, but I need to hear it from someone who's lived it and you're, you're actually in it right now. So, so mm -hmm. Luca, you know, Luca Doncic, you know what I'm saying? Like, like guys like him who you hear that, um, you know, he just, he just jumps on the scene, you know, in the NBA for us here and people like they, they, they didn't remember, they didn't remember him for playing college and that, like that, but they hear that he's been playing professionally since like, you know, like as an example, some guy's been playing professional overseas since like, you know, 15, 16, 17, whatever. Like explain, explain that. And, and, and are, are they still going to school, like high school? And, and, and are, are they getting, you know, they, they get, they're, they're, they're professionals, they're getting paid, you know what I'm saying? So at that D3 level, kind of how is it when you have like a 17-year-old on the scene? Kind of break that down. Help, help, help me understand that. I mean, my level is different than what, like, Luca and them was at. Luca okay. Them, they would say, say, they would be like if they played on the professional team over here in England, so like the BBL where I was. Okay. But where I'm at, I mean, guys are still going to school, so they might be at college or – or, or they might be working. Okay. So they still doing something else mm -hmm. besides like coming and playing basketball. So, gotcha. they, but guys like Luca and them, they, they've been playing. They, they play professional. I mean, they've still had to go and do their schoolwork and stuff like that, but they've been, they've been getting it in and mm -hmm. over there, they, it's like an academy really. Mm -hmm. So I think he was at Real Madrid. So, where I would be there and then be able to work with him on and off the court. So he'd been on the scene for a minute. And when I was coming through, it was Ru Ricky Rubio. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Because I played in Spain for a year. And when I was over there, I think he was like 15 playing on the ACB team. Wow. That's crazy. And, 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 and like holding his own, like holding his yeah. own. Yeah. So it like, wasn't how, like. He... How do those guys develop like that to the to the point where they can be young professionals playing against grown men at that young age? Like, I, I don't know. Because that, that's the mindset they, they have in those academies and the trainers and stuff. I mean, they, they prepare them well over here in Europe. And that's that's why I try to go and I study like different like European like coaches and stuff just to try to get the formula so I can like help my guys out. Or if there's someone that comes and contacts me and like, oh, what should I do here or there? Yeah, like, what's, what's the blueprint? <laughs> yeah, it, it don't have to be just over here. It can be somebody from the States or something who needs some help. I mean, I can help them in any way I can, then that's what I do. And I have the knowledge that some of these other guys might not have, like being from the States. I'm over here in, the, in, in Europe, so I might have a different connect for them to help them out. Got you, got you. That's that's awesome, man. So, what are your um? I mean, you're, you're coaching now. Do you have any future goals or you know objectives? Or are you just pretty much kind of just you know taking it one one day at a time and just enjoying this experience, like kind of as it is right now? I mean, I'm enjoying where I'm at, but I mean, if the if the COVID didn't hit last year, I think we had a good chance of moving up a division. Okay. So if we'd have moved up, then that's that's the progression I wanted to take. Yeah. <clears throat> Because with the owner, I tried to tell him, like, yeah, I'm here now, like, and I'm trying to help you get more prominent and move up to where I know you want the club and stuff to be. But at the same time, if another, I guess, a bigger job where I can make money, real money off of yeah. come, comes along, then I'm going to have to weigh up those options. Of course, of course. <laughs> I mean, because you're still, you know, this is still like, you know, uh, you know, almost experienced resume builder you know what i'm saying you're 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 you're, you're paying your dues you know yeah in, in this in this arena you know what i'm saying yeah so i because I, it's, it's not something that i naturally wanted to do was was go into coaching like yeah. i i took time away and and it just it built up and I'm like mm -hmm. okay i that's what i want to do now uh-huh so it wasn't like oh you can go straight in from playing the coaching like i didn't have that mindset my mindset, gotcha. I was done playing, was like, I'm done playing. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> no doubt. No um, doubt. So, so, so this whole coaching thing, was something, coaching thing was kind of something that kind of organically happened. Just like you yeah. said, just in the meetings and kind of, you know, kind of caught the bug. And it's like, yo, I'm yeah. yeah. But I ain't want to say, oh, I'm going to jump into, like, this big-time job and then be like, you know what? This ain't what I want. I'm yeah. done. And then leave somebody high and dry like that. I didn't want yeah. my name out there like that. So, so starting, like, lower down. I mean, I can get that love back. I can get my development as a coach. Uh huh. I mean, so I can understand the game better from being on the coaching side now compared to the playing side. Uh huh. I mean, it's not. I guess it's fast pace and it's not pressure. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can kind of take my time and, and grow with it. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, shout, shout out to another legend, another overseas legend, Chester legend, one of the best defenders of all time, John Lennon. John Lennon. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, um, how many years have you been coaching um, overseas? Nah, this is just I'm going into my second year now. Okay, so 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 you so you had a season last year, like before the yeah. COVID, you got you actually coached and played. Yeah, so we, we was one we was one game away from finishing our season. Oh, for real. And then we'd have had the playoffs after that. Gotcha. All right. So 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 from a coaching perspective, on 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 the other side of the bench now, uh, do you have any um wild memories? Uh, did, was there any crazy things with y'all fans, or just did it didn't get that crazy? You know, fires in the stands, or nah. y'all fans was a little a little more calm and you know. Yeah. Respect. They not they not getting wild like that in England. Oh, not 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 in England. <laughs> uh, they ain't said no fires. They ain't doing none of that. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. You go to a, a soccer game or a football, what they call over here, you might see some wild fans. But no, basketball, no. <laughs> I guess basketball is more, I guess, family oriented over okay. here. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So I mean, they got <laughs> passionate fans. Don't get me wrong. So it's yeah. passionate fans. It's a big following. So when they supporting their team and their players, they support their team they and their players. Yeah, that's so what's up. Not gonna get wild like in some of those other countries. Got you. Hey, so I want to go back. Um, is there anything else you want to mention about your current, you know, current status? So I wanted to go back, um, back a couple chapters. All right, you know, let's go, go back. All right, so so go back. Um, um, spend some time. Spend a few minutes. Um, what are some of your most memorable? Um, because this is a special time for all you guys, man. All you really good players, man. Like like those summer league memories, man. Whether it's like Sunny Hill or or you know all that kind of stuff. Those were some of the best times, man. You know, with all the all the good players in the area. What are some of your 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 favorite uh, best summer league memories? Players you played against. Um, t t take us back there, man. Um, I guess like most players from the area, when especially if you was any kind of player, you played Sunny. Sunny Hill League. Uh -huh. So everyone was there. All the big names was up there, both from high school and college and professional. So you had all levels, like, playing together. And, nah, it was it was some good games up there. I mean, I played with some with and against, like, great talents. Yes. Who who, who are some of the teammates you played with? And um, any anything to kind of jump out. You know, it's, it's, it's always those things that may happen where – Still to this day in barbershops, people are like, yo, I remember Charles Smith did this or did that. Like, you know, tell me about some teammates and things like any anything that can I know it may be a blur, but anything that, that still may kind of stick out um from back then. I mean, summer league, I mean, I played with guys like Sam Cassell. I played with him in the Baltimore League. Mm -hmm. So down there, like yeah, he's one good guy. Like <laughs> he's a straight professional, but he gets it done on the court. I mean, I played with Chris Weber. Oh, I did mean, you? Wow. Down in the Baltimore League, they was all on my squad down there. Oh, snap. Was that during, like, high school, college, or after college, or what? Yeah, that was, so that was after college. Okay. Yeah, so, and then. Almost kind of like a pro-am kind of thing? Yeah, so the okay. Baltimore pro-am, yeah. Got you. So down in, but up in Philly, I mean, played against guys like Eddie Jones, Aaron McKee. You had AI was up there. I mean, you had guys like Mark Macon. I mean, you had all those guys coming from my area, Turk Mott and them again. You know what I mean? So just being able to share the court with them, Rashid Wallace. Crazy, crazy. Are there, is, there, is there any specific memory that you have, um, either a player you played against or something that happened um, from, from back in those days, anything you can remember? Uh, a dunk or anything, man? Or it's man, all had, blur? Man, I done had so many dunks. They just kind of all, like, blend yeah, together. Yeah, together. <laughs> no, man, you. Do you expect me to go back? That's like 30 years ago. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Do you remember you came up and played in Norristown? In, in I, played, Norristown, I, uh, I remember Norristown. Yeah. I said it off, I said it off in Norristown. You too. did. You played with the – did you play with the – you played – I think I was on that team. You played with the Young Guns, right? I think so. Yeah, I think you played with the Young Guns, with DP and Harry Allen and everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you that's shut where, it down up at the park. That's where I first met DP at. Yeah, you shut it. You shut it down up there. <laughs> I think that's one of the things I enjoy was like going to different places like that and playing and performing and get. I guess earning guys respect from different areas. Of course. So like guys from Norristown, like to this day, every time I see Derek, he he talk about that summer league or Marcus to talk about it. Yes. Or I go up to Philly, I still see some of those guys or mm -hmm. Chester. 
I mean, not being from Chester to be able to go into Chester and uh -huh. and get respect from those guys. Yes, that's, yes. That's huge. That's 100%, huge. 100%. Chester, Chester guys are real. They they give it to everybody. They don't they, they don't just hand out their respect. In exactly. You got to. <laughs> And they you definitely bring that. that orange and black, you know what I mean? That's what real. I'm saying. <laughs> and for me to be able to go in there and just earn their respect and be able to play with some of those guys and still be able to communicate and talk to them nowadays and just reminisce sometimes is just just an honor. <laughs> no doubt. No, no doubt. Um, oh, my man, my man James Nelson Stewart, who's uh, you know, also a high school historian, he said, um, he said him. Uh, DP, uh, they all played all played together in the Delaware shootout after uh, y'all junior years. You remember that with Sam Rines? Oh, okay, I remember that now. You remember that? Yeah. Got you, got you. Um, what about high school? Um, any high school memories? You you mentioned like you know playing against Chester, you know Zane Shaw them guys playing against Turkmont, Glen Mills. What are some like specific games you remember? Some big games you remember from high school? I mean, those those were the big games against those. Okay. I mean, but one was, I think it was my senior year playing against Chester. And I guess, like I said, we was prominent again for, at Chai. So the Chai-Chester and Chester rivalry was kind of back. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, it may have only been two, two years, but we was back. Mm -hmm. And it was one game. It was at our place. But they was... It was supposed to be an evening game. But all the hype about the game was that so many people was coming that they tried, they switched it like later in the day. So it wasn't like they switched it the day before. That day, they switched it from a seven, I think it was a 7.30 tip to a 3.30 tip. Whoa, like right after school type tip. So so they, they was trying to keep people from coming. So they was trying to keep the crowd and just like the 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 the, the, the intensity down from a yeah. crowd perspective. Wow, yo, but I it, know them it, people was pissed, but it didn't work. No, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? What happened? It was sold. It still got sold out. Are, if people still found out and like, and where was where yeah. was, was, it, was it at the clip joint or was it at y'all place? It was at our place. Okay, so people still word spread that fast. People were still there. <laughs> it was still there. It was sold out. I mean, standing room only, really. So you came out, they were standing behind the basket. Long, like, it was like a summer league game, almost. Like, you had to park where people standing behind the court and stuff. Yo, that's crazy. That's but crazy. The, cra the crazy thing is about that day is that my dad was coming straight from work. So he got there, and they tried not to let him in the game. Wow. You can't deny Pop Duke's entrance, man. So that's they, crazy. They, they was like, nah, we took capacity. You can't come in. I know your pop was like, no way. I'll pull no. my boy off the court. Hey, he told security to go get me. I wasn't playing. <laughs> oh, wait, say it again. Say it again. <laughs> he told him to go eat me. He told security to go get me and say I wasn't playing if he didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. They said, come on in, sir. <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. I was like, yo, tell my boy to come here because we both yep. leaving. <laughs> and see if y'all can deal with that. Security yep. said. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's a pet, that's a move, right? That's a card to pull right there. You, I'm yep. not missing out on this memory. Are you kidding me? Yeah, right. Me and my boy out. <laughs> Yo, bring him. Go get him. <laughs> I know that's right. Yo, that's legendary right there, man. Hey, what about camps? Um, I know these days, um, you know everything you know is centered around AAU and all that kind of stuff. Um, was um, uh, you know back then it was like ABCD camp, Nike, uh, you know five star. Did you participate in any of those back then? I actually really didn't go to many camps. Okay. Uh, I went to like a couple like just like smaller camps here and there. Okay. But not none of those like national kind of things. Uh, national okay. camps I didn't play any nationals. I didn't play AAU. Okay. Okay. And what did you did you wind up um did you go up to Concha Hawking and play in the Donner Field back then? I been I played up in Concha Hawking before. Yeah, what do, you, what do you what do you what do you remember about it? Like who what team do you remember what teams you played for and like uh what do you remember about that? I can't remember no team. But I, <laughs> I remember playing against um Donald Foyle though up there. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep, yep, that's big time. Yeah, he was huge. <laughs> yes, he was, for sure, for sure. They, I was, they, some, no, they actually tried they actually tried to get him to come to um the Chai when he first oh, moved to the area. They tried to get him to come to Chichester. Yeah. 
Oh, that'd be Cause, crazy. Cause I think because he um he lived close to the school, but they um with the people that I guess he was living with. The family was with, yeah. yeah. But Got um, nah, they wouldn't have that. Yeah, my man Lackey <laughs> on here from um Simon Grass. He has a great memory. He said, "What about the Keystone? You played in the Keystone games? Keystone games? Is that high school?" Uh, Keystone. I, th I think he said Keystone. I think that may be what he's talking about. I'm not sure. Keystone Games, like in high school, maybe or not. I'm not sure exactly. He's he's listening. He'll clarify. Oh, okay. Yeah, but um, but yeah, man. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, so you said so. What what were the other schools that were recruiting you besides um? What were some of the other schools that came that, that came after you? Said like like uh, he's like uh, Pepper. Who was who, who, who? Some of the other schools you said. I got recruited late by like DePaul and like Providence. So those were like the bigger schools that came late. But I, I took my visits. I went to George Mason <clears throat> and then I visited um Ryder in Hartford. Gotcha. Back, then, back then you only got your three visits. Gotcha. I don't know how many you get now, but I took yeah. my three visits to those three schools mm -hmm. and, and made my decision from there. Gotcha. I mean, I was going to go to Hartford, so I was okay. probably – that close to choosing Hartford because gotcha. um, Vin Baker was my host up there. Oh, word. So, oh, that's what's yeah. up. That's what's up. Vin Baker's so definitely he, a legend. So Vin Baker, he was the man up there. And, I'm sure he was. But I think after my rider visit, I sat down and, and discussed it and, and thought it through. I think that was just, I guess, the right place for me to go. Got you. Um, my man Lackey, they clarified. Um, he said uh, either a camp. Keystone and my man James Nelson Stewart said, "Did you play in the Keystone State games at all? Do you remember that?" I mean, if it's Keystone, only ones I can remember, I think they they might have been in like Gettysburg or something like that. So I don't know if that's the okay. ones he's talking about or not. Got you. Okay. Played in some stuff out there. Got you. Got and you. Like, like I said, man, my memory like trying to think some back. Some of us are blurred. <laughs> Stuff just try to just start running together. Yeah, I can I can only imagine, man. Um, what, what when you think back over your journey, man? Um, you know, and you're still involved with the culture. You, you know, you're playing now, still involved with the game. Um, you know, what has what your journey taught you, man? When you think back over it, um, and just you know, what have you learned, you know, about the game and, and through life and, and basketball? I mean, it's it's taught me a lot. I mean, one key is is time management. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, plus you you get out of it what you put into it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you only put a little bit into it, you ain't you only gonna get a little bit out. Yeah. I mean, you gotta keep getting better and performing. So it ain't like oh, I'm here so I can stop working hard now. You gotta continue to put that work in, mm -hmm. or it's gonna it's not gonna work out. I mean, because over here, especially in Europe, I mean. Teams is cutthroat, so you might have that one bad game and you're going home. So yeah. you're not continually putting in that work and that effort. Mm -hmm. and it ain't going to work, and that's your livelihood right there. So exactly. waiting on that check, you need that check. So if you want it, you're going to have to put that work in and that grind in to get it. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, if are there any, I don't, I don't like, I don't like to use the word, use the word regrets, you know, because I believe everything definitely happens for a reason, and you know, every sky's playing, you know what I mean, the way things play out in people's lives. But um, are there any things that you wish you could have either changed or done differently um during your your basketball journey at, at any level, high school, college, you know, pros, anything? I mean, not really. I mean, college, I kind of finished a year earlier. Cause we had some some stuff went down and I left a year earlier because I did, one of the reasons was I didn't want to sit out a year. Okay. Because the coach ended up wanting me to sit out a year because they was transitioning to the MAC. Gotcha. And I guess I would have been there the first year of the MAC, and I didn't want to sit out a year. And me, gotcha. and, coach, me and coach had some problems, so gotcha. I ended up leaving. That's what started my professional career earlier. Okay. Earlier. <laughs> gotcha. 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 But, Professionally, I mean, not regrets, but I think I I should have probably not should have, but looking back, I probably probably should have stayed in Spain longer than I did. Okay. I think I came back earlier than I should have. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's about it, plan wise. I mean, it is what it is. So <laughs> I mean, after. I came back from Spain and came back here to England anyway. I still had a great career after that. that was of probably, course you did. Yep. 
uh, my best years. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. But now, what, like I said, what, if I'd have stayed in Spain though and had those years, mm -hmm. I think I'd have been at a higher level and and probably made a lot more money. But yeah, so like sp speaking of money, I hear a lot, a lot of um, like a lot, like it, it, it's on um, various ends of the spectrum from from this end where guys aren't getting paid, the teams owe them money. You know what I'm saying? Paychecks aren't coming in team winds up folding or or on the opposite end where like you know like you know, my, uh, like like my little you know, guy brother marcus green he had a long career and you know what i mean his, his stock continued to rise he had a solid agent and things are going well financially um or like 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 um stefan marbury where he was like the michael jordan of overseas you know what i'm saying making millions of dollars and so so how, how how is the pay you know what i'm saying how, how not not anything specific but how is the pay for you overseas and like how you know how, how did regarding the different levels kind of how does it go you know what i'm saying break break down the money situations in england just 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 overall like just just uh, overall scenarios and it, for how how things can possibly go i mean in england i mean we not i guess you're not you're not coming to england to to make money okay okay <laughs> gotcha 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 not not that you can't make money mm -hmm. so i think that's what one of the main reasons I stayed here is I got paid on time every okay. month. Gotcha. I, every single penny. You know what I mean? So I had no issues with that. That was one of the main reasons for me continuing to come back also. That was okay. one of the deciding factors. Like, well, gotcha. if I go there, I didn't heard stories about y'all, so I don't know if I'm going to get paid on time. Or exactly. Money. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. But, so, I mean, you, you hear about that in every country. Like, guys, like, not getting paid on time or they only get a partial check, and then the team saying, "Oh, we will pay you at the end." Nah, <laughs> it ain't happening. <laughs> nah, I mean, I know, I, I know some guys that I think, I think they might have been in Russia that, like, they still suing the um, teams over there, like trying to get checks, and I think in Greece too. Mm. I mean, I've been luck, like I said, I've been lucky enough on every team I've been on, like. I got everything I was old and everything on time. So, I mean, I might be one of the lucky ones to say I, I've been good on that side. Yeah. Of the court, so. That's a blessing, man. That's great, man. Um, a few more questions. Then I open it up to the people. Um, so, 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 uh, watching right now, we got, we got a nice little audience. Um, if anybody has any questions, my man Charles Smith got my man, my man Toomey just joined. Uh, Lackey's still here. My man James Nelson Stewart. Anybody has any specific questions for my man, um, Charles Smith? about his high school career, college, you know, professionally, anything, you know, start typing your questions in the comment section and we'll address them as they come. Um, but two more things, man. Um, what advice do you have um, uh, for any younger players, man, for any high school guys, college guys? What advice would you have for them, um, guys playing professionally now overseas? Um, any keys to success or just any, any things that, um, that you learned that kind of helped you out? Well, help me out. You got to take care of your body and, and your mind, mm -hmm. man, because – Without those two, it's not going to work. I mean, a lot of guys struggle, like especially being by themselves overseas or even in the States sometimes. So you got to look after your, your well-being that way and, and after your body because your body is your tool. So like I said, I wish I would have took care of mine a little bit better earlier on, but I figured it out eventually. And the guys coming up, I guess, through high school and stuff, everybody always um, – I guess talking about, oh, I'm a five-star, I'm a four-star, you know I mean, athlete. I don't think none of those things matter. I think if you work on your game and put your time in, I mean, guys is going to come see you, whether you D1, D2, D3. I mean, you can make a career out of this if you put in that time and that effort. So that's what I would just focus on the basketball bit and meet all the politics and stuff to everybody else and all those star ratings and stuff to – everybody else and just work on you no doubt that's what's up man well i appreciate that man i'll say my thank yous at the end but real quick want to get to a couple of these comments or questions my man g is here I'm, I'm sure you remember you may not recognize the name but but um as far as his name name he put it up but g shot picks he was, he's a photographer now but gavin gavin Be gavin bethel I, i'm sure you know him man he uh, he played over in england he's from england he played over here so tell, tell me how you know him man and he said he said tell, tell us about some of the early wild times man <laughs> nah we can't, we can't discuss that live on this. This, this ain't that type of show. <laughs> nah. <laughs> he, he know that, too. That's why he got to laugh after it. 
What <laughs> um you you play uh so Gavin's from I met him you know he, he's over here in, in you know in in uh in, in yeah, you know Tri State now um, I met yeah, him you know, in Delaware now exactly in Delaware yeah <clears throat> um so tell me how you met him and were you guys playing together or you know what your relationship was like yeah he was on the Newcastle team my first year over here oh no doubt that's what's up yeah. awesome, awesome. Well, he's my he's my teammate but he's from um I think Liverpool okay but he he was up in Newcastle my first year he 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 was a good player he's a little athletic, but a little, <laughs> little crazy, too. That's why. <laughs> no you know I mean, he's a little crazy, but <laughs> we, we had some good times. That, that first year was just a – it was it was like a, a professional frat party. <laughs> <laughs> no, doubt. no doubt. Hey, y'all were, you know, y'all were young, man, and, you know, enjoying life, I'm sure. <laughs> It was it was whatever then because we wasn't winning. We was just out there. <laughs> no, I mean we the club. We was there. Whether we had a game the next day or not, we was <laughs> wilding out. <laughs> it was what it was. Yo, that's funny. He said. He said. He said. Yup, skinny and young. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's funny, man. Um. Um. Oh. Oh. So just to clarify, um, this um Justin Armstrong, that is Clarence. He's just using Justin's phone. So that's Clarence right there. Uh, okay. Yeah. So Clarence said, um, uh, who was uh the best shooter at Chichester? I told him <laughs> Clarence was the man. I no doubt. I'm not lie. Best shooter, but I was the best scorer though. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> I mean, he he paid away. He like I said, he missed the Ch Chichester. He he up there and everything. Like he was the man coming through that time. Then I think he went to he went to Drexel and and played great there. Now he's a um, what you call it? He's a ref now. Oh no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. You know what? I did see that. Hey Clarence, man, shout out to you, man. Hey Clarence, if you can, um, send me a message. If you know how to do it, send me a private message, Clarence. I definitely want to try to get you on the show, man. Um, I was telling um Charles earlier when I was doing some research on him, um. Uh, a related, you know, just other information came up about you, and I kind of read, you know, some information about you, man. So, so Clarence, I would love to have you on the show, man. Legends Week to kind of pay homage to your legacy as well, man. So, Clarence, if you can, uh, you know, DM me your information, um, send me a private message with your contact information, man, or I'll, you know, message your brother and try to get your information so I get you on, man. Um, but yeah, um, if anybody else has any questions, man, put your questions up. But if not, Charles, man, um, any any last minute shout outs or anything else you want to say before we tune out, man? Oh, no, man. I just want to say thanks and appreciate your time for having me on or even consider me as one of the legends in the area and stuff. Like I said, it was always an honor just to to play on the court with some of these guys that, that you've um, interviewed and stuff and and had on the show so far. Just to say I, I played on the court with them is it, just an honor. So thank you again for just having me on and, and let me um, tell my story a little bit. No doubt, I appreciate it, man. Um, and one of the uh, one of the things that I always ask the legends, man, that's a big part of um, you know, what I do. Um, I'm, I'm like the Fred Sanford of sports archives. Like I, I've been collecting like old high school games and college, ma mainly high school games. I've been collecting them, like you know, old VCR tapes. You know, everybody always has, you know, oh yeah, my my my, my grandma or my aunt, you know, in her basement, she got this my box of my old games, you know, on v v you know, VCR tapes. Um, and, I, and I, you know, I preserve them and, you know, bring them back to life, you know what I mean, for, okay. for, for, you know, for the people to see again on, on my website and my YouTube channel. Uh, so I say all that to say, do you have, um, do you remember, do you have any of your old games like on DVD or any old Chichester games or anything like that? On I, I got boxes at the house over there. Over, over, over in, in the States, in the U.S.? In the States, yeah. Wow. Like, 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 just... like your parents, your family has them? Or... Yeah. My parents have them at their house. Where? Well, like VCR tapes or like DVDs or what? I got DVDs and like VHS. Yo, if we can coordinate um, any way for me to possibly connect with them, because um, I would love to like get you know get a couple of the big games, man, and and get them online, bring that stuff back to life, man, because oh. just so they're not just sitting in those boxes. I can you know preserve them. Um, you know, I can, first of all, I can make copies. You know, what I mean, to, to have my own yeah. copies. Then I can get them online, get them on YouTube, on, on my YouTube channel, man, so we can you know bring that stuff back to life for the people to see, man. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. I mean Worst case, I can put you in touch with like my brothers because my brothers go there all the time. And perfect, perfect. I can coordinate with them, meet them over there, get some things, make the copies, get them right back to them, and then I can get them online so we can all enjoy them again, man. Yeah, because both my brothers they they had great careers that, in their own right. So mm -hmm. I mean, they was Mister 
both Mr. Delaware is like they was big in Delaware. No yeah. doubt, we, I, I can get everybody's stuff up there, man. So, so we'll exchange. Um, I, I'll make sure I, I'll, I'll get you my, my contact information, connect yeah. me with them, and then you know we can make it happen over the next couple of weeks or months or whatever. Ah, right, that's cool. All right. Yep, no problem. Right. So again, man, it's Big Star. It's Legends Week, man. Just uh, paying homage to the legend <clears throat> Charles Smith, man. Um, you know, thank you so much for for being so transparent. You know, thanks for, uh, you know, carving out time to tell your story, man. And um, I'm going to have this full story, the full interview, the full little documentary on my YouTube channel. So once I post it, like later on tonight or tomorrow, I'll send you the link so that you can, um, you know, continue to share your story and, uh, you know, send it out to family, friends, so they can kind of hear your story. All right? All right. That's cool, man. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, man. God bless you, man. And one last thing, man. Just what was your, you know, just a personal reflection on the kind of Legends Week thing um, that I'm doing, you know, bringing all the older guys on. Stuff like, you know, what are your thoughts about what I'm doing, man? Oh, man, it's, it's great. Like I said, I've, I've said and um, I've rewatched some of the ones that you had on before, especially coming from some of the guys that I actually, like, played against and stuff. And, and, and remember, it just brung so much back and being able to watch that and, and reminisce a little bit about those okay. times. Because being over here in England, really, I don't get a chance to really talk about I guess stuff that happened in high school and that, no doubt. and stuff. So everything over here is always professional. What you do professionally yeah. in Newcastle and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So to be able to sit back and remember some of the stories and actually like listening to them, I remember like some of those instances that um, some of the guys might talk about. Exactly. Yeah. And like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I played there, or I remember like of seeing course. you here, yeah. seeing you there. So it's just great to just sit back and, and watch what you're doing, man. It's amazing. No Thank you, man. Pretty and good. one last thing. I know I keep saying one last thing. I got, I, I got, I got several one last things. <laughs> <All right. laughs> my, my last one last thing. Um, as a way of networking, um, if you know any legends, you know, guys that you've come across that you that you may be able to put me in contact with that you think will, you know, fit the mold of what we're doing here, um, feel free to, you know, endorse any guys and put me in contact with any guys as well. I, I would greatly appreciate that. So Clarence Armstrong, that's one. I definitely got to, you know, link up with Clarence. Um, yeah. Anybody else, man, um, that you came across that that would be uh, that considered legends in, the, in their in their states or wherever, um, if you can get me in contact with them, I greatly would appreciate it. All right, that's cool, man. All, All right. right, all right, man. All right, we'll definitely stay in contact, man, and we'll try to get them games and um, you know, get get the stuff on YouTube for you. But thank you again, I appreciate the time. All right, man. Thank you. All right, now. All right, man. Take it easy. Yep.